We're looking at this week's health headlines, including a new study about fertility. Joining us now is Morning News medical contributor and Northwestern Medicine physician, Dr. Lauren Stryker. Thanks for being Good with morning. us. Good morning. So let's start. Uh, does being happy impact your fertility? This is really interesting. You know, women who are having a hard time getting pregnant are often told by well-meaning friends or relatives, just, you know, don't get stressed, be happy, it'll happen, which is honestly really irritating and it's absolutely the wrong thing to say to someone who's struggling with fertility. But there was a study that just came out to see that if the things that are known to contribute to people's happiness might help when it comes to conceiving. In other words, if you're a happy person, does it make you a more fertile person? So there's six different wellness practices that in prior studies have been shown to actually make people happy. And those six things are focusing on the present, expressing gratitude, sleeping well, performing random acts of kindness, I love that one, um, maintaining social social contact and exercising. And so the study was to see if people were trying to get pregnant and utilize those same practices, would that have an impact on their ability to conceive? And so they had this group of people that were actively trying to get pregnant and they tracked to see if they were doing these sorts of practices. And what they found is that if people did all of those things, it did seem to impact on their fertility a little bit. But if you're only gonna pick one, the one that seemed to have the biggest impact was sleeping well. So bottom mm. line, if you're trying to get pregnant, good idea to get some sleep maybe perform a random act of kindness or two but if it's not happening don't put off getting that fertility evaluation because if you're not ovulating or there's a sperm problem being happy is just not going to help all right what about the biological clock for men yeah, while we're on the subject of fertility, you know, everyone kind of knows now and it's out there that in women, fertility starts to decline as early as age 30, and it's the rare woman who can see spontaneously after age 45. But what's not as well studied or discussed for that matter is men, the men that do become less fertile with age. And it appears that the guy's biological clock starts ticking a whole lot louder right around age 45. And in fact, in a new study, men older than 45 require approximately five times longer to achieve a pregnancy is men who are young, less than 25. And we're not talking about men with an older partner. We're talking about older guys who have a young fertile partner. So, so what's going on? After 45, sperm counts decline, motility goes down, genetic abnormalities, just like in the women, goes up. And in addition, men who are older than 45 have twice the risk of having a child with autism and three times the risk of having a child with schizophrenia. So you put that together with a partner who's also older and fertility rates take a double hit. So a few takeaways. Number one, obvious solution if you're a woman a little older trying to get pregnant and find yourself a younger guy. Um, but also any couple that's getting pregnant, don't just look at the woman. You know, you've, it's just as important to have the guy evaluated as it is the woman. And the last thing is there's kind of this move for women thinking about freezing their eggs so that when they try later, they'll be able to conceive. Well. Now people are starting to look at young guys freezing their sperm because people are putting off pregnancy longer. Hmm. All right, how about a new study on the health impact of eating? Yeah, you know, over the last few years, there's been a trend towards um, older people eating alone. And the COVID, of course, the isolation is one thing, but also increased my midlife divorce rates. You know, your nuclear family is unlikely to be in the same city. So we know that older people are eating alone. And earlier studies have shown that there's a negative impact on mental health and general health. But a new study that was just released looks specifically at the impact of eating alone on nutrition and cardiovascular health. And this study only had women over the ages 65 and what they found is that women that ate alone number one they were less likely to look at the nutrition label or pay attention to it so more calories more carbs more salt and these women were more than twice as likely to have angina than women who did not eat alone so the question really is when we look at this is it social isolation that causes women who eat alone to have worse health or is it that women that eat alone are more likely to have a bag of chips followed by a hot fudge sundae than someone who's eating with another person and it's probably a combination of both but people who eat alone do need to pay attention to, to what they're eating all right dr striker thanks for being with us for more information you can check out drstriker.com you can find her on twitter and instagram thanks a bunch thank you time now for on town hey anna